Welcome to another Anatomy and Physiology Smart Art video where we guide you through an important piece of art. After watching this video, you should be able to describe how skeletal muscle fibers obtain the energy to power contractions. Let's begin by looking at this summary image. ATP, shown in bright yellow to indicate energy, is our energy currency fueling muscle activity and is generated in two ways by glycolysis and aerobic metabolism. Let's start at the top with glycolysis. Here we see glucose entering the process. Lysis means to loosen or unbind, and the process of glycolysis unbinds or breaks down glucose into pyruvate. In glycolysis, each molecule of glucose yields two ATP molecules as well as two pyruvate molecules. This process is anaerobic, meaning without oxygen, and occurs in the cytosol. Now, let's follow the pyruvate into the mitochondrion, where it undergoes aerobic metabolism. In aerobic conditions, meaning with oxygen, these pyruvate molecules are absorbed into the mitochondrial matrix and enter the citric acid cycle. The citric acid cycle yields carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions. The hydrogen ions engage in the electron transport chain, which requires ADP and phosphate, as well as oxygen, forming water and yielding many ATP molecules. Let's compare the two mechanisms of energy production. Glycolysis produces only two ATP molecules per glucose molecule, while aerobic metabolism extracts energy from the two resulting pyruvate molecules to generate an additional 30 ATP molecules. Notice how that difference is indicated. The ATP from aerobic metabolism is drawn bolder than the ATP from glycolysis. Let's now look at this image illustrating resting muscle with blood vessels delivering fatty acids, oxygen, and glucose. At rest, oxygen is plentiful, aerobic metabolism proceeds within the mitochondria, and abundant ATP is produced. Surplus ATP combines with creatine, forming the high energy compound creatine phosphate, or CP and ATP is also used to convert absorbed glucose into glycogen. At moderate activity levels, as ATP demand increases, stored glycogen is converted back to glucose and then pyruvate. The pyruvate enters the mitochondria where it undergoes aerobic metabolism, generating ATP. Oxygen and fatty acid levels are sufficient for aerobic metabolism, producing ample ATP to meet demand for muscle contraction. This is what occurs as you jog on the treadmill for 45 minutes. At peak activity levels, during a 40-yard sprint for example, ATP demand is enormous and the mitochondria cannot absorb oxygen rapidly enough to meet the demand. So, glycolysis is the only pathway producing ATP, and stored CP is quickly depleted. Pyruvate and hydrogen ions accumulate within the cytosol, resulting in lactic acidosis, causing the muscle to fatigue. In summary, ATP is produced by two processes. The first is glycolysis, an anaerobic pathway that produces two ATP molecules and two pyruvate molecules per glucose molecule. The second is aerobic metabolism, in which mitochondria absorb pyruvate, oxygen, and other substances to generate 30 ATP molecules. Aerobic metabolism produces the vast majority of the ATP we need at rest and during moderate activity. So what? Why is it important to understand how muscle fibers generate the ATP required for contraction? Well, this knowledge is crucial to understanding exercise physiology. Aerobic exercise, such as running, cycling, and swimming, triggers our blood to carry more oxygen by increasing red blood cell count and our muscles to store more oxygen and myoglobin, a protein similar to the hemoglobin that carries oxygen and blood. Exercise also increases glycogen content and the number of mitochondria in muscle. The result is an ability to produce more ATP when demands are high. You see this as better performance in your distance running and as greater availability of energy during all of your activities. However, these physiological gains can be reversed if you then become sedentary and is one reason why exercise is recommended for a lifetime. 